Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. Boy, uh, when I started 30 years ago in treating ligamentous joint instability, you know, I would never see people with tremors or head shaking. And it seems as though every year there's more and more people coming in with what's called essential tremor or head shaking. And if you Google that, you'll see that, geez, they don't really know the cause of that. Like most people that I see would tell me that it's just getting worse and worse and worse. It's a progressive disorder and it's really disheartening. So imagine like you're at a restaurant and, and you, you know, it's like this, like you can't even go to a restaurant and imagine if all day long, like I'm ADD enough, but can you imagine like I would just feel terrible. So it's very, very distressing to the person. So I just wanted to go through how a person might be able to tell yay or nay that it may be related to the neck. I'm not saying all cases of essential tremor or head shaking is related to uh, the neck, but it's easy to understand that if there's a fluid flow problem out of the head, you know, the jugular veins are blocked or a person moves a certain way and the cerebral spinal fluid is blocked, that the brain might get pressure on certain structures inside the brain that leads to tremor. So I'm gonna show, uh, we took some video of one of the patients here at Caring Medical. So let's look at her essential tremor present when sitting with her arms raised. Then, and then I'm gonna also have her lay down and do different neck positions and let's see what happens. Okay, so we could see, right, we could see that there's a lot of shaking there, so that's essential tremor. You know, that's what they call it. So, and you could see where then eventually it progresses to the head. Then I had her lay down, and you start to see maybe it's a little bit better. See how it stopped there than the left side? So she probably has more pressure on the left side. Then I extended her neck, so I extended her neck. And then I had her, I, in other words, I got her in a position where the jugular veins were open and I did this for one minute and you could see where it, to me, it's much, much, much better. So then we have her on a program of cervical curve correction and her instability to treat it with prolotherapy. So basically most people don't realize that they need to have this kind of a neck curve in general to have the jugular veins open enough so the brain pressure isn't uh, is an increase by jugular vein compression. So what happens is when a person looks down at a cell phone, you know, eventually the neck curve instead of being lordotic, it ends up reversed. So this process I call the cervical destructure progression. Lordotic curve becomes a military curve, becomes a kyphotic curve, and then eventually you get osteoarthritis and eventually you'll get what's called an S curve as the upper cervical gets hyperextended. So what causes this is obviously the many, many hours in front of a computer and looking down at a cell phone, but basically there is a process called creep. Creep is the medical term for the slow stretching of ligaments. By looking down at a cell phone for 10 hours, 12 hours a day over a long period of time, what ends up happening is like a rubber band that keeps getting stretched. The ligaments stay in their elongated position. So to reverse this, there's a treatment called prolotherapy that involves injections to thicken and tighten the ligament to resolve the instability. Now, what we do beside x-rays is we do motion x-rays or digital motion x-rays and what this does is it shows us not only what the neck curve is but is there any ligament damage like is there any abnormal movement of the bones and an abnormal movement of the bones is from generally ligamentous injury. And then what happens is if you get jugular vein compression there can be different parts of the brain that have increased pressure on it because of the block of the 
fluid exiting the brain via the jugular veins, which are the main drainage ports of the veins. So what main drainage ports of the brain. So for instance, when there's high pressure on the frontal lobe, well, the frontal lobe is where you do higher level cognitive functions, problem solving. At somebody's job, you have to figure out a lot of things. The frontal lobe is heavily involved in that. So not only can a person get tremors, but you, this can lead to a lot of head pressure. And then uh, also the person often says, I have brain fog, head pressure, and that my problem solving ability is going down. Like I feel I'm getting dumber by the day. Anyone who has clicking, popping, grinding of the neck, neck tension, they have new onset tremor, maybe there's other symptoms related to the vagus nerve or other symptoms related to this high head pressure, such as the memory isn't as good or the problem solving isn't as good or the brain fog's like terrible or there's vision symptoms, then that suggests that the, it may not actually be a primary brain problem, it might be a neck problem. And then the cerebellum, so if you have fluid accumulation in the cerebellum, cerebellum is often involved in movement. In medical school and residency, we would always do the finger to nose test and when, often when somebody had cerebellar things, they, they, you know, they got this thing called ataxia, like the balance is off and this or that. So uh, besides just having an essential tremor that you can have ataxia, it's called. And that can be from a jugular vein compression or if there's any fluid flow, other fluid flow block like the cerebral spinal fluid, which can easily get blocked at the atlas if there's upper cervical instability. Now you know you probably have upper cervical instability if there's always tension here, like there's always tension and you, you know, there, there's not a massage or a treatment that has been able to resolve that tension, then it's likely you have upper cervical instability that needs some prolotherapy. I think a lot of conditions are from candy. Candy is cervically acquired neurodystrophy. So if you read here, cervical acquired neurodystrophy, AK candy, is the degeneration of body tissues from neurologic problems caused by a breakdown of the cervical curve due to ligamentous cervical instability. Basically, the atlas goes forward, right? The atlas is supposed to be back, but if you have a breakdown of the cervical curve, the atlas goes forward. So it's like, if someone's atlas went an inch or two forward, what structures are getting compressed right here? Well, one of the structures that gets compressed beside the, the jugular vein is the vagus nerve. Well, the vagus nerve innervates all the, all the structures inside the body pretty much. You often hear me say, this is kind of interesting, that um, you know if there's too much pressure on a ligament, the ligament's going to break down. Like in other words, the ligaments in the neck were never meant to hold the vertebrae in place when you're looking down at a cell phone for 10 hours, right? Well, when they do animal studies and they injure the nerve, like if they injure the nerve to the ligament, the ligament degenerates also. So that's just kind of, like in other words, all the body tissues, they need some proper electricity to it. And when the electricity to the various organs, the lungs, the heart, the digestive tract, uh, the muscles, you know, the tendons, the ligaments, you can get all these symptoms, you know, chronic joint pain, dizziness, dysautonomia, light sensitivity, shoulder pain, like ringing of the ears, just a myriad of symptoms. So I call this condition candy or cervically acquired neurodystrophy. Neuro mean neurologic dystrophy, meaning degeneration or death of certain tissues. Now we know that when you have muscular dystrophy, right? Muscular dystrophy, it means the muscles are getting degenerated or damaged or they're getting atrophic. They're getting weaker, weaker, weaker. So cervically acquired means it's from the neck is causing the neurodystrophy. There's some problem with the nervous system that's leading to the to dystrophy or degeneration of the various bodily tissues. And for short, it's called candy. And then, you know, basically somebody who has essential tremor, what we'll do in the office is test the jugular veins in different positions, upright position, 
uh, with the person flexed, extended. Then we have the person lay down in different positions. Certain positions will cause the jugular vein to get blocked. Like in this example, the person's flexed. In this position, the person's laying on their side, but then the jugular vein's open. And then by restoring the neck curve with cervical curve correction program, getting the computer up, using prism glasses. And if somebody wants to look down at a cell phone, lay prone or on your stomach. If prolotherapy is needed, then we do prolotherapy in the neck. This is actually hot off the press. I haven't even told Izzy this. There's somebody very, very close to me, and I just felt compelled to call them today. So I'm just going to tell you what the person reiterated to me. And then uh, basically the person's wife had had a terrible, terrible uh, brain injury, you know, from a, from, a, from a stroke, a massive stroke. And then uh, I was just calling just to see how the person is doing. I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, a mother, uh, very healthy, you know, then completely disabled, can't pee, can't eat, can't talk, can't do nothing. And then the person reiterated to me that they were doing like spectacular. In their own words, uh, my friend said that the neurologist and all the person's doctors, like the person had at one point, they probably had like eight different doctors because you needed like a GI doctor, then you needed a lung doctor and a neurologist and a, she had a catheter, you know, she had a feeding tube, she had everything. Typically, when somebody's really, really disabled, isn't it true, like you go to the hospital and everything, and everybody is upright. You know, everybody's upright in the bed. And you know that that, is, that closes the jugular veins. So this particular person had the wife more laid down, and then when she was going to occupational therapy, well, basically occupational therapy and physical therapy, they worked on neck posture, neck posture, neck posture, neck posture. Now I can't say that that's why she had a great recovery, but it makes one interested in that perhaps proper neck posture and sleeping in a position that open up the jugular veins, it may be that, re that neurologic recovery would be much greater. I mean, that's the whole thing with candy that it's cervically induced tissue damage around the body through various mechanisms such as jugular vein compression and vagus nerve compression. But I was so encouraged, I was just so encouraged after I heard that in the middle of the day today. So that really made my day because it's somebody that's very close to me. So love you guys. Thank you again for watching.